I want to demonstrate for you a little bit more about what's been going on in the world since I, since God spoke that message to me about massive devastation that's coming. And I, I did a video not that long ago talking about many things that have happened since I spoke that, since I spoke that word to you. But more recently and most devastatingly, I think, I think at least from what I can see, most devastatingly have been like massive floods, like in Norway, in China, they had a flood that was uh, the worst that they've had in 140 years. And of course, in Lahaina, like I'm sure if you're looking at the news, that's all over the news. Unfortunately, they're not really televising most of what's going on in the world, which I find kind of odd. I think they're just trying to stave off the climate activists uh, so that no one gets alarmed, you know? And that way there's no pressure put on them. But there's some pretty heavy stuff happening right now. And the worst of what I've seen have been those things. Uh, but not to mention like fires everywhere. The fires in Greece, that was another one in Rhodes. It's like the 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 footage of this is just intense. And then of course, like, you know, hail and and flooding, uh, you know, flooding in Canada. They say, I can't remember if I said Norway or Nova Scotia, but both of those places. And today, not that long ago, I think uh, probably this, I think it said this morning, in India, there was massive flooding and the flooding led to, so far, last I checked, it was about 58 people who were killed and 20 to 25 who were under the rubble of this Shiva temple in Shimla. Well, okay, let's talk about this because there's a lot of um, <laughs> correlation, okay? I don't want to say that it's irony. It's not, I mean, there's, there's some irony in it, like the incredible idolatry that goes on in Hawaii of false gods who supposedly control the universe. And I haven't actually even researched what they've been doing, but I think I will perhaps, uh, you know, pause the video and, and research that for a moment. But I want to point out what is most obvious to me here. And I want to remind you that it's, it's not bad for you to go and look at what's going on in the world, but you need not let the world tell you how to think and how to perceive these things because then they say, oh, mother nature, whoever that God is. I mean, she's not doing much for us. Mother nature controls anything. I mean, who is that? No one ever wants to give any credit to God and no one's offended by people saying mother nature or the God of climate change or the gods must be angry or giving credit to nature like it's a God. Last I checked, nature was created by the God. Is there a message from the God in bringing down this Shiva temple in Shimla? Is there a message in people being caught under the rubble of that temple? Was God sending a message about a year ago in July when he sent a cloud burst to their, you know, they're like, um, they do a pilgrimage to this cave and it's a holy site for them, a Hindu holy site. And he sent a massive cloud burst. By the way, that's a flood. And it devastated, like it killed a bunch of people who had gone on this pilgrimage. He couldn't escape. Is he sending a message through these things or not? To put you in a position where you are trapped under the rubble of the very temple and the gods, the deity that that represents is pretty profound to put you in a situation where you're not going to escape while you are worshiping at this so-called holy site and you will not escape those floodwaters. Same thing, by the way, happened in 1755 with that Lisbon earthquake. The winds shifted and, and scientists have been baffled by this, which I think is awesome. I love it when God foils these false gods, but the winds shifted so that no one could escape. The, the way that the current was moving, no one could escape. And so scientists argue amongst themselves, well, it was on this day. No, it was on this day. No, it was on All Saints Day because that's what people like Voltaire were writing about. We know what day it was. They want to argue about it because it doesn't fit their scientific puzzle, scientific template. In good grief, there can't be anything greater than their scientific template, could there? Let me tell you a little bit about this false god, Shiva, also known as Mahadeva. The great god is one of the principal deities in Hinduism. He is the supreme being in Shaivism, one of the major traditions within Hinduism. 
Shiva is known. I'm just reading from Wikipedia, by the way. I, I don't usually use Wikipedia w- Wikipedia, because anyone can really add anything in here. But the thing is, like, no one's worried about distorting the word of false gods because it means nothing. So I think we're pretty safe here. They're only motivated to distort the word of the living God. So I certainly wouldn't go anywhere but the word of God to talk about God himself. Shiva is known as the destroyer within the Trimurti, the Hindu trinity, which also includes Brahma and Vishnu. Hey, you remember Brahma? Remember when Emmanuel Cleaver opened the 117th Congress by lifting up a prayer to the false god Brahma in our nation's capitol building? You remember that? Then closed it up with amen and a women. Absolute fool. In the Shaivite tradition, Shiva is the supreme lord who creates, protects, and transforms the universe. Okay, so, so far we have the god of destruction who creates, protects, and transforms the universe. That's ironic, huh? Can't protect itself or its own house. The god of gods is bringing destruction and destroying your temple. I'm gonna call baloney on that. In the goddess-oriented Shakta tradition, the supreme goddess... Devi is regarded as the energy and creative power Shakti and the equal complementary partner of Shiva. Shiva is one of the five equivalent deities in the, not going to try to say that, the Smarta tradition of Hinduism. All right, well, I always think it's interesting that people need so many gods. If any of these gods are powerful, why can't they save themselves and why do you need so many of them? And why do you need so many hands and arms? Because the God of gods created everything with his own two hands. And he didn't need all this gold and ornamentation to make himself look important. You see the irony in that? Like, it's just delusion in people's minds. The auspicious one. The great God. The supreme being. The one who creates, protects, and transforms the universe. And in a second, you're knocked off a shelf. And the torrent crushes your temple. And I would think you'd be embarrassed, but you don't even have enough sense to be embarrassed. Not even enough sense to realize that if you really had a God who was in control of all these things, why do there keep being cloud bursts in your holy site and floods that wipe away, that wash away temples and deities? And why after that happens do you inevitably surely go and pray to that God not realizing that it's nothing. You remember what happened when Elijah foiled the false gods that the people were, you know, praying to and slashing themselves for? How Elijah was sitting there saying, shout louder, maybe he'll hear you. He didn't have to work very hard for his God to do anything, did he? You remember when God says, which of your gods foretold this, bring him in so they can, you know, be a witness. How did they know I was gonna do all these things? But God says to his people, you are my witnesses because we are witnesses to the real God. You remember when Jesus said to the Samaritan woman at the well, you don't know what you worship. Salvation is coming through the Jews. Do you remember when Paul said, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made The world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human idols as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him though he is not far from any one of us for in him we live and move and have our being as some of your own poets have said we are his offspring therefore since we are god's offspring we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone an image made by human design and skill in the past god overlooked such ignorance but now he commands all people everywhere to repent For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. So no one should say that I'm making fun of anyone's culture. I'm not making fun of anyone's culture. What I'm saying is this is ridiculous. 
to worship things made of stone, wood, gold, silver, or any other object. This is ridiculous that the people of Pompeii, by the way, I've been hearing people compare what's happening in Lahaina right now, where what just happened in Lahaina, and the footage, what we're seeing in Lahaina, that they're comparing that to Pompeii. Do you know that people might have had some time to get out of there? But when Mount Vesuvius started going off, they thought that that was a sign from their God. And they started celebrating. They started celebrating. Didn't take it as a warning. And isn't that a profound message? The very God they believe in, that they trusted in, that's the God that the God of gods handed them over to, to kill them, to horrify them. And what an incredible imagery that God left us with in Pompeii so that we could see the faces of those who died, the plaster casts of the people who were engaging in that idolatry and revelry. They had been celebrating, by the way, their false gods for three days. You want to know what they were celebrating? The festival of Vulcana Vulcanalia. This was the very last festival ever held at Pompeii, and ironically, it was honoring the god of fire. Vulcan was the god of fire and volcanoes, renowned for his master skill in metalworking. The festivities were celebrated with large bonfires and shrines displayed throughout the city. Numerous games were held and live fish or small animals were thrown into the fires as a sacrificial offering to the god of fire. They were also celebrating the festival of Diana, which was to honor the goddess of wild animals and the hunt. She was also seen as a fertility deity who helped women in conception and delivery. This festival was so important that even slaves were given the day off to celebrate, taking over three days to honor the goddess, where the people of Pompeii would make offerings of fruit or small statues of animals. They would also ask her for her blessing by tying ribbons to trees in the groves by lakes or oceans, even writing specific requests or prayers on the ribbons. So what they were doing was, I mean, they were engaging in total revelry, like drunkenness, bathhouses, brothels, feasts, and it's so crazy. Like, this is so ironic that people look at this, historians look at this, and they say, oh, these were part of their religious festivals. It's, this is Roman religious life, you guys. Roman religious life. It doesn't get any more pagan than this. It doesn't get any more heathen than this. Since when are bathhouses and brothels part of religious life? I mean, it always in Rome, always. It's just to those who are actually living true religion, this kind of stuff is inconceivable. This is what we did when we were evil. And some of us didn't even go this far. And in fact, among these r religious Romans, it was a normal part of everyday life to visit brothels and get a prostitute. It was a way of letting off steam. No stigma, not even a thought that this might be wrong, might not be okay. Women who were taken and sold as sex worker slaves. So why are we so up in arms toward Hollywood. I'm not saying Hollywood is not evil. I'm not saying they're not doing these things. But I would like to know, where is the accountability? Why is it normalized for Rome to do these things in the name of religion? That is baffling. And to do these things to children and the most oppressed, poor countries, spearheading the transatlantic slave trade because the Catholic Church needed workers in the sugar fields. Anybody going to talk about this part of history? Because the emperor looks pretty naked to me. The last thing I'd like to show you is that the Wuhan virus is back in a new variant called EG51. EG51. And it's got a nickname. Guess what its nickname is? Eris, the Greek goddess of strife and discord. Are we ever going to learn? Like God sends plagues to call us in and we name them cute little nicknames after our gods? What is wrong here? How can we ever expect for God to relent or turn and save us if this is what we do repeatedly? Set up false gods. Think that this is cute. Who cares what you call it, right? That's what my Mormon bishop said to me the other day. My childhood Mormon bishop why are you celebrating Easter, Bishop? Why are you teaching others to do the same on God's Passover? Well, who cares what we call it? I mean, I think God would beg to differ, but apparently you have other wisdom. Think about that for a minute. How do you take God's Passover when he extended the covenant to us and lifted up to a goddess Ishtar, the fertility goddess, 
and a bunny that poops eggs. Getting kids all sugared up. Kids don't care about Christ. They're not caring about him on Easter. They're caring about sugar in their Easter basket. How are you going to raise them up in the way they should go when you keep throwing temptation in their face to be like the world? That's why I care. How are you going to hold them accountable to love Christ and circumcise from the sinful flesh? Understand the importance of withholding from oneself and disciplining the physical flesh on God's holy days when you keep giving them the world in an Easter basket and telling them this is how we celebrate Christ. Do you know what that is? Because I just got done talking about outright pagans and now I'm talking about what's going on in Christianity, counterfeit Christianity. Do you know that 666, that number of a man that's used for the mark of the beast, that that is translated into a covering? That is a covering. It is a covering that will not save. That is coming from your heart. You keep calling things Christian that are of the world. You keep fornicating with the world, prostituting yourself to the world, and then bringing back all that disease into the body of Christ. That is a covering. It will not save. And you know what God says? Everything will be laid bare. That is a covering that will be stripped off of you, and you will be left naked and bare. We have to come out of Babylon Babylon has to come out of us. We need to do away with these idols that we've been placing before God. We need to understand that nothing is going to save us and that he is dealing very specifically with idolatry. Let's take a look at the gods in Lahaina. The deities, Ku, Cain, Lono, and Kanaloa are often referred to as the four main gods in traditional Hawaiian society. This generalization belies the incredible power and central role of female deities in the Hawaiian world. Gods such as Pele, Haina, Papa, Hanaumoku, Akea, and Kihauhaini, I don't know, were undoubtedly main gods and were subservient to no entity. Na Akua, Wehaini, such as Poele and Kiewehaini played a central role in the creation of everything from the living world itself to the governmental kingdom of Hawaii. Ceremonies for these goddesses took place at the most sacred heiau in the islands. The highest women of state were known to bring offerings to these female deities at the Heliopapa or women's heiau. All right, so again, we have this theme of a deity that is said to be the creator. We had that in the situation of India. Now we have that in the situation here. I told you one of the first things that God said to me was they are trying to, when talking about science, when talking about the churches, they are trying to usurp and covet my power and glory and my creations. And that's what idols do, isn't it? And he says that there's coming a time where his people are going to throw out their idols, idols, idols laid over with silver and gold and whatever. We're going to throw it out like a menstrual cloth. Like, hey, you know what? You've been with me all these years, but bye-bye, not a second thought. But what's going to happen to those who serve these things? Well, exactly what's happening right now. I will tell you one more thing about this, uh, this fire in Lahaina. The Catholic Church is trying to tout, uh, Kristen actually sent me an article on this, that they're, they're trying to say, oh, the, this miracle that their church is standing. And they're trying to act like God passed over them, which is very interesting because God will most certainly not pass over them. And it, it's interesting because they lead you to that false god of science. And in situations like the 1755 Lisbon earthquake, for example, instead of acknowledging that they were doing something incorrect and that God brought judgment on them on the day of their so-called holy day of all saints when they were torturing and burning Christians at the stake to light up their towns for entertainment. Or what about the Chile earthquake in 1835? That two-minute 8.5 magnitude earthquake and tsunami that resulted in the destruction of Concepcion, its cathedral. What about that? No, they're not going to point to any of those things, right? They're not going to point to the fact that they're, they, can, they claim that their pope can pray for someone and heal them. That he's as good as God on earth, but he can't save his own bowels. He has to go in and have pagans work on him. 
What a body metaphor, by the way. So don't buy into these lies. I don't think anyone who listens to this channel would buy into them, but I just want to give you some examples, you know, as well, when people are trying to tell you, oh, well, this happened and well, didn't God pass over this? I mean, they won't acknowledge God in anything else, but wherever it's convenient for them, they'll say, oh, God passed over us. Judgment is here. Judgment is coming. I told you three weeks ago that you were going to see massive devastation, that you would see it with your own eyes, that it was not just going to be something that, uh, well, I shouldn't say just something. It's not something that is done in the spiritual alone, but I told you that you would see it with your own eyes, that you would see massive devastation with your own eyes so that you would know that what I was saying was true. And these are things that have happened. There are only a few things, but they're pretty salient since I spoke that to you. And my prayer is that you'll have the eyes to see it, that you'll go back to God and, and talk with him about it and ask him so that you can believe that he's doing this, that these are the last days, that what I've been talking with you is about is true. And so that there will be a fire in you to go and share with others what's happening at this point in history, that you will return and that you will be moved by the spirit to know how to be a witness to and for God. Thank you for listening. Please discern this with God.